I think of what I'm doing as very pragmatic science. So although it seems very fanciful and um, imaginative, it's really motivated by observations and uh, its ultimate goal is to explain observations and predict new ones that are testable to decide if this picture is correct or the current conventional model is preferred, the Big Bang or Big Bang inflationary model is preferred. So I don't really have um, take a philosophical point of view, I really have a very hard-nosed scientific point of view in trying to measure the different ideas relative to one another. Both the Big Bang and the inflationary theory, these two competing theories, are designed to explain why the universe is nearly uniform, why space, which could be curved according to general relativity, really is rather flat and Euclidean. And then the third thing is they have to, they have to explain this um, slightly wrinkled distribution of energy that existed in the early universe that explains uh, this, the galaxies and why the microwave background has the fluctuations in temperature that we observe it to have. But they use very different physics to do these, to these two things. The inflationary picture uses physics at very early times in the universe and very high energies. And the cyclic picture uses physics which occurs at very low energies and over very long times. Now if you do something fast at high energies, you not only are going to create these density fluctuations, but you also produce actually fluctuations in space-time itself, which are called gravitational waves. So you produce very high amplitude gravitational waves, which over time should be propagating through the universe in which we should be able to observe their effects on the microwave background, for example, and then ultimately directly. Uh, in the cyclic model, because it's very low energy and very slow, you, uh, you produce exponentially weak gravitational waves, hopelessly, uh, hopelessly tiny gravitational waves that you'd never possibly observe. Uh, now one of the key efforts uh, observationally that's ongoing right now as we're talking is that people are building experiments to look for the imprint of gravitational waves on the microwave background. So if we see them, uh, that would be wonderful evidence favoring inflation but it would absolutely kill the idea of a cyclic model. Uh, if we don't see them, uh, then I think the simplest explanation is, is the cyclic model. It takes a number of years before a theory goes from proposal to making its way into a broader recognition, simply because when it first emerges, there's often a lot of confusions and misstatements, and and that's true in this. But for both, in, that was true for inflation, and that was true for this. Uh, where then, as you you know, go back and address those issues, where often the theory becomes simpler and simpler for you to understand, but then also simpler for you to explain. So, in fact, what I was doing in Toronto just uh, yesterday was giving a, I was trying to explain to people why they should be thinking about bouncing models because this was, I was talking to a community of people mostly ha like you described, astronomers who are busy observing and testing the theories but for some reason haven't been thinking very much about these. And it's basically because when they first heard about the theory, it was phrased in the language of string theory and extra dimensions and brains and things that seemed very exotic. And they thought, I don't have to think about that, <laughs> you know. Uh, uh, they, they just thought it was too exotic to consider seriously. And I think that now that we've understood it better, we understood how you, you know, you can use those things, but you don't have to use those things. Uh, the theory has now gotten into a form which is very simple to explain, 
uh, to astronomers, they, they oh, that theory is actually pretty, yeah, you can see that's actually as good a storyline, good as conceptual storyline, as simple as the inflationary story. And it really comes down to, is the Big Bang a bounce or not? And when you phrase it, and they, when they see that, then I think they pay more, begin to pay more attention. Um, so I think that's one factor. The other factor is uh, there's already a currently favored idea in place, and it hasn't been disproven um, observationally. The Big Bang inflationary picture, if anything, the way astronomers think about it is that you know, these, there were these predictions written down in the early 1980s, and here we are measuring them, and they, they seem to agree. So they, they think they're, con you know, many astronomers from what they've learned about inflation, think that things are converging towards those predictions, and so why do they have to think about an alternative? It's kind of an interesting story that's been happening, though, which is the idea of inflation that, um, that the astronomers that, that, that produced these predictions um, is a kind of naive understanding of inflation that... Um, uh, on the one hand, ended up producing predictions that have been confirmed, but on the other hand, we no longer to be true, believe to be true theoretically. Our understanding of inflationism has developed to the point, uh, developed shortly after those early predictions, to realize that um, our original idea that the universe goes to a big bang, it inflates, it stop, inflation stops everywhere, and we just get the universe we observe, we actually don't think is true anymore. We know instead the universe that once inflation starts, it actually never stops. It undergoes a kind of eternal inflation. And we know that it doesn't just produce universes of one, uh, it produces a kind of island universes, regions of space which are way beyond the limits of where we can see, um, which have matter and radiation in them, and m many of them galaxies and stars and things like that. But they're not all the same. In fact, you get an infinite variety of these things. So when we, when we say there's a prediction, but I now I've told you there's an infinite variety of things, there's kind of a problem there. Uh, what does it mean to predict? You know, our, our notion of what inflation predicts has kind of gotten challenged by the fact that, in fact, it doesn't just end everywhere. It actually keeps reproducing more and more of these island-like regions of space, which can have galaxies, but which don't all have the same properties. In fact, um, in no sensible way can we say that Ours, for example, is more probable than one that's different. So uh, it's, the theory has kind of evolved to a point where it's, uh, it's broken down in a funny way. But astronomers have, have not listened to that part of it. You know, the, uh, you know, cosmology bridges between physics and astronomy, but a large part of it is the observations and testing. And they just, you know, they, um, I don't think they've heard that story about the problems of inflation up till now. And again, I think now that we're talking about it more, it's, it's now become in the last few years, both because of the cyclic model and because of things happening in string theory, it's becoming more vocalized. That what people, what the naive notion of inflation isn't right. I think awareness of this is going to grow. So I think, you know, I just think you have to be patient.